My name is Michelle. I'm 28 years old and from Yakima, Washington. I actually work all over the place. My office is in Dallas, but I travel all over the country for my job as a missionary with a Bible translation organization. So a lot of my job is public speaking. I travel around to universities and churches and missions conferences, putting on presentations for the need for Bible translation and church planting. Other than that, a lot of my job is then office logistical work. So, well, about four years ago, the Bible drastically changed my life. It was a night and day difference from a morning to an afternoon, and it was because of the Bible. It was because of truths I was reading in the Bible, testing them, applying them to my life, and then seeing how they like worked out, how there was such blessing, the exact blessing that's talked about in the Bible was attached to how the Bible says to live. And not only that, but God started showing me that He is the God of the Bible. He was doing the miracles for me that you read about in the Bible. You read about um, the widow's oil never running out. You read about people being raised from the dead. And God started to put me in circumstances where I needed to pray for these sorts of things. And then He would answer me. About two and a half years ago was when I heard of the need for Bible translation. Somebody came up to me and told me, Michelle, there's 7,000 languages in the world. Did you know that only, you know, 531 of them have four bi full Bibles? And that wasn't okay with me. So uh, it was an instant burden on my heart. I already had a burden for the people I was living with, you know, just American people. I feel like we miss out on such spiritual blessing because we ignore spirituality. I think, um, I think the devil has done a wonderful job in America distracting us with a thousand different things, uh, distracting us with even good things, you know, like work and entertainment and things that are enjoyable or good for you, but he, he distracts you and then you don't have to focus on reality, you don't have to focus on spirituality. So that was my, my burden, was for American people, and then I heard that, that so much of the world doesn't have Bibles, doesn't have even the ability to know uh, who created them and how much he loves them and it was I don't know instant for me I absolutely feel like I have an advantage because of my faith everybody else has had to leave uh, the people that they talk to and the people that they relate to on a daily basis since I relate to a spiritual being on a daily basis I don't have to leave him anywhere <laughs> I already have an alliance coming in with God and he is all-knowing and all-seeing, and he says that he blesses those who seek him. And so I, I really feel that the outcome, no matter what it is, is going to be a blessing. Doing the kind of missionary work that I do, I travel a lot. So I am used to being away from people that I know. I'm used to staying in a new location without, you know, family or friends around. I think that'll be one advantage. Another advantage is that um, because of... Um, fasting. I'm used to not eating. So I think, and I know that the first fast is always the worst, so I think at least the first few days might be a little easier for me than, than the rest of the people. Survivor is one of a kind. There's no other game like Survivor. It's a genius setup. It's the only game in which you have, you know, 16 to 20 people put on an island, and they're all trying to make friends and vote each other off at the same time. You know, you can't win by being best friends or enemies with anyone. So, just for that sake alone, it's, it's uniqueness. I think that's one thing that drew me to it. Another thing that drew me to Survivor is that you just get to be in nature. You get to be exploring, you get to be having an adventure, you get to be fending for yourself, living off the land, things that, you know, hipsters talk about and never get to do. <laughs> it's especially hard watching people around me, especially my generation, ha just sitting in front of a TV all the time, or a computer, or a cell phone, whatever. Because in Luke 14, a master makes a feast, and he invites people to it. And they all have excuses, which are good excuses, but it's, they're, it's inhibiting them from coming to the feast. They're saying, no, I have property to take care of, no, I have to take care of my livestock, things like this. And when I read that, I'm hit so hard that that's Americans. That's us. The God of the universe, the God that created everything, is inviting us to commune with him 24-7.
and we say, no, I have my favorite TV show, I have my second favorite, I have my fourth favorite TV show to watch, I have, I have to check my Facebook again, things like that. And it's sad to me that we trade, you know, such amazing blessing for this little temporary comfort. I think it'll be good for everyone on the island to be away from cell phone, to be away from technology. I think it'll cause you to think, and I hope that they will welcome that time and really use it to their benefit. I don't know what lengths I'm willing to go. I am going to take it a day at a time and immerse all my actions in prayer. That's the best I can do. If if I feel like I should be cutthroat, if I feel like that's the, the most clever thing, then I should do that, and I will. If, if I come to a spot that maybe would require me to risk something that maybe seems immoral, I'm not willing to do that. As the Bible says, better a poor man whose ways are blameless than a rich man whose ways are perverse.